Welcome into the Cubs baseball channel, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment because we continue to bring you the big-time guests, at least the ones that agree to come on the show. And so far, it's our biggest guest, former Chicago Cub and current broadcaster Ron Coomer joins the show from his hotel in Pittsburgh ahead of the Cubs game against the Pirates today. Coom Dog, how we doing, man? I'm doing great, Chuck. Mick, great. Um, nice win last night, and good to join you guys this morning talk a little Cubs baseball. Overall thoughts on the uh, divisional race right now, because Chicago's hot. They've won a couple straight series and, and really since mid July, they haven't lost a whole ton of games. They've been uber consistent. Meanwhile, on the other side, Milwaukee keeps winning. So the Cubs just aren't making ground in the divisional race. Yeah. It's been one of those things. Both teams have played good baseball. Milwaukee got healthy um, in their rotation and that has helped them. We know that's their, that's their forte is their starting pitching and, and some good bullpen arms, and they got healthy. Um, none, none of the teams, you know, we all had our chance to really kind of take the division, but it just didn't work early in the year for anybody. And now, you know, you got three-team race, Cincinnati right in there too. So uh, I wouldn't say any of the teams are looked at like Atlanta is looked at in the league, but all three – could win the division easily with a hot stretch against each other, you know, and we got Milwaukee coming up um, next week in Chicago. So you just never know what's going to happen, but there's a whole boatload of teams in major league baseball that kind of fit in the same group. You've got Atlanta, LA, and then you got a bunch of other teams that could all get into playoffs and all do some damage in the playoffs. Great to see you, Ron. Always, uh, Love hearing from you and uh, catching up. Let's talk about the Cubs at the deadline. Yeah, I I just didn't see this happening. You know, like they didn't feel like a team that really had an identity. Uh, they were starting to drift back. Them and the Angels had like a you know fifteen, maybe it was like a twelve percent chance to make the playoffs on that Tuesday. The Angels went in. They lost a row. The Cubs won. You know, eight a row, and they bought. And it's just like. A switch went off. What did you see watching them every day? Well, first of all, good to see you, Mick. Um, always, uh, it's it's uh, miss seeing you in spring training this year uh, too much. Usually, we we do a lot of ball games together and have a lot of fun. Um, but this uh, this spring, or not this spring, but this trade deadline was unique. The Cubs got hot right before the deadline, and some good things happened. They had a great series in St. Louis. And you had some key moments, and you pushed, you know, you pushed that eight-game win streak right up to the deadline and made it very tough on the Cubs to, to not be buyers. So, you know, I wouldn't say they pushed all their chips in, but they, they became buyers. And the moves they made have helped because Candelaria has done very well for the Cubs playing third base and hitting, swinging the bat well and lengthens our lineup. So that has been a great addition. Uh, Quas has been a guy who's been a little up and down, but Candelaria has been a great, great addition. And um, yeah, I would say if you looked at the Cubs two weeks before the deadline, you're probably saying sellers and then you win eight in a row and now you're buyers. So that's Major League Baseball in a nutshell when you're in the middle of the pack, kind of, you know, with all the, the, the added wild card and added wild card teams, you just don't know where you're at until maybe the last couple of days. Mick knows the farm system better than anyone in, in terms of everyone that's working for the, uh, the, the big house or, or the big clubhouse right now. And in, in the uh, Chicago Cubs team as a whole, what are you guys hearing about some of the youngsters, the Jordan wicks, the Ben Browns of the world? Is there some excitement starting to catch your ears and eyes? Yeah, I would say definitely, you know, you look at um, wicks has been a guy that the, everybody's talked about. Brown, same thing. You know, we're all looking forward to seeing them in a Cubs uniform and seeing how that's going to work out. Um, and, you know, um, Armstrong, I think, you know, he's another guy. You know, PCA is a guy that, you know, everybody's looking at to see how that's going to work out. So um, there are some things. Pitching to me is the, is the one thing that really stands out for every ball club. When you get guys that are throwing the ball exceptionally well in the minor leagues, you're like, oh, that's – everybody is looking for pitching in one way, shape, or form, whether it's a starter or a bullpen guy you're looking 
So for those two guys to really be stepping up and and hopefully making an impact here in Chicago soon um, would be a welcome addition. And, you know, so we'll, we'll just see what happens here. I, I got a feeling that may happen sooner than later. I got that same feeling. Hey, guys, I want to remind you. As we hang out with Ron Coomer on the Cubs baseball channel, and you guys have made this uh, special spot. Um, we've uh, been really blown away by the support that you've given us, and we hope that that continues. All right, look, uh, i got to ask you about Cody Bellinger. He has been everything and more that the Cubs could have expected. I love watching this guy play, and, you know, Coom, I'm not just, hey, like, I like this guy or I don't. You know, I, I'm telling you, I'm all in on Bellinger. He's great defensively at first. He's great defensively in the outfield. He's able to hit that high fastball now. He's got different swing paths to different pitches. It just seems like anywhere you put him, the guy's really good. Long term, do you think that the Cubs end up having him sign and stick around? Well, I think they would love to. I, I promise you that. There's no doubt they would like to keep him. Um, he's one of those guys that, you know, he's made a huge impact on the Cubs this year. I did not realize watching him in Los Angeles how good a defender he was, Mick. Yeah. When you only play a team a couple times a year, you don't get to really get the feeling and in, in the know of how a guy does on defense. Um, he's an excellent defender. I mean, you talk about center field, he's a really good center fielder. And first base, it's it's amazing because most times guys go from the outfield to the infield. You know, you see a big drop off in their play defensively, and he has great hands at first base. He really does, and that's coming from a corner infielder saying that. So that's you know, I, I'm a little hard on those guys sometimes, um, but he has done that. The swing itself and the work that he put in on his swing to me is. Um, very impressive for a young guy. He had great success early in his career and then injuries and some mechanical issues to his swing and things like that. Just, you know, it did not look good in Los Angeles. I'll be honest with you. You know, as a guy who studies hitting, I didn't see how that was going to fix itself. And, and you know, that, you know, the ups, upshoot swing he had, and then it got worse and then he got injured and, uh, he was just, he just was not in the hitting zone with the barrel of the bat much at all. And he's made a major correction to that. And now he's hitting over 320. Um, the two strike approach of putting the ball in play has allowed him to hit lefties much better. And now he's got confidence hitting lefties. So he's right in the heart of the lineup. It doesn't matter who's on the mound. He is one of the league leaders in the hitting against left handed pitching and has done damage. So. Um, a big tip of the cap to him. He has changed everything around offensively, and he's been the focal point of the Cubs team this year. And he's been clutch. Extremely. Here as of late in particular, you know, the, the two-out, two-strike base hit to drive and runs is, as you know, it's backbreaking for the opposing team. And he's been doing that. Would the Cubs like to keep him? Um, I would say absolutely 100% yes. <laughs> This is the Cubs baseball channel, but while we're on the topic of injuries, we have to bring up the, the biggest news and not just baseball, but Whoa. the sporting world right now, Shohei Otani. Yeah. He hurts the UCL. He was probably going to be the first $600 million man ever. Yeah. If you're Shohei Otani right now, and Ron Coomer, great baseball player, don't get me wrong, but no one's Shohei Otani. But if you were no. Shohei Otani, if you were in his shoes for a day, what would you do here? Would you maybe give up the pitching? Uh, how would you decide to go forward with your career? No, I would. I would go and have my elbow fixed immediately. I, th you know, you're you're looking at a guy that. Uh, how do you say? I mean, is he the best player to ever play our game? You know, there's only one other comparable, right? I mean, and that guy played in the 20s and 30s. I mean, who <laughs> who else do you compare him to? There's no comparables. So for a guy to be talked about in the Cy Young race and then also talked about as a, you know, he's leading the league in home runs and, yeah, I go get fixed. He's, he's that good. Go get your arm fixed. Come back and play and be the guy that you are. And maybe he's not a, a starting pitcher any longer. Maybe he's 
a guy that is the closer, you know, and, and maybe his role changes a little bit on a team from the pitching standpoint, but he still hits every day. I mean, the guy throws 90, 98, 99, 100 miles an hour and is dominant on the mound with a low ERA. I mean, that's too valuable. So I, I would anticipate him getting fixed, uh, getting, getting his arm fixed and, and getting back to doing both. Uh, Dansby Swanson, Cubs signed him to a big contract, and uh, he's another guy like Bellinger. I've been really impressed with. What do you think about him? Dansby is a guy that um, has never gotten really hot offensively this year, but when you look at his numbers, they're definitely they're good. He's going to end up with about twenty five home runs or more um, this season, which is great. For a shortstop in particular, he's going to end up hitting 260 to 275, depending on what his last month is like. And with that being said, he has not gotten hot. And his shortstop play, I would put up against anybody in the league. I really would. He, he makes the routine play. He makes it every day. He makes the sensational play. He's the. There's no doubt he's the captain of the infield. Uh, and he's a leader in the clubhouse. He's a dynamic young guy without, you know, pounding his chest all the time and having to be, you know, the dig me guy all the time. Um, I think when you talk about guys that are leaders on a team, he brings it every day. There's just, you really can't, I don't know how else to describe him. He's, he's, it's a great pickup for the Cubs. I mean, when you start talking about, him and Nico playing short and second base for however however long this is gonna last, but years. You got a double play combination of a Trammel Whitaker. I mean, pick some of the great double play combinations. That's what you got. You got two really good middle infielders that are gonna be good offensive players and be together for a long time. How about Albert Alzali? Uh spent some time as a starting pitcher. I think the Cubs anticipated that he would be a starting pitcher when he was brought up. He slotted into the closer role at some point this season and has just flourished in that role with all the close games that the Cubs have had lately. It's been Alzali locking it down late. Now it's gotten dicey at some points here and there, but he always gets the job done and picks up the save. Your overall thoughts on, on Adbert. Well, Chuck, he got put into that role a lot of need, right? I mean, the Cubs were mixing and matching and at the end of the game, it really, you know, nobody was like, you're the guy, then you're the guy. It didn't work out that way. And he just got put into that role because of the game that day. And he gets the save and, and does really well. And he's got that edge to him to begin with as a pitcher. So that's a positive. And then, so he gets a save. Then they give him another chance and he gets another save. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's he's on a little bit of a roll and – uh, he has taken over that position for the Cubs. And I, I know David Ross is extremely happy. He's been used a lot here as of late. So, you know, they're trying to get him a little time, downtime. But, you know, it's August. And the end of August in a pennant race, every team's pitching is everybody's tired, everybody's sore, everybody's got their issues. So I, he's going to pitch a lot here coming up. Coming up. And uh, yeah. I, I just love the idea of him taking all young guys when they take control they get an opportunity in the big leagues to play every day or get a role like that and they take control of it and they're ready to make that make their presence felt in the big leagues i i, I just love watching that young guy that he has really done that for the cubs this year yeah he's been one of the reasons the cubs have had success because you get a lead Think of it, man. And, you right? we know right yeah you you don't you don't the Cubs are not buyers without certain guys like that taking taking control of their opportunity. Without a closer, you're not a playoff contender. You're just not. And he became a closer in front of our eyes right here, and now the Cubs are a playoff contender. And they're great in one-run games and close games. And it's because you get to the you know you get to the latter end of the game, you bring him in, and he's going to throw strikes. It's uh, pretty exciting to have a closer who can, uh, you know, lock down games. And every time he goes out there, I'm like, you know, I, I don't 
I don't want this to end. Whatever it is, just keep doing what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's been good. He's He's got a really good fastball. Here is of late, um, the last couple days, uh, his slider has been a pitch he's gone to, and it could be, you know, a little, little tired arm, little whatever that might be. Uh, mentally tired for guys. It's a lot of baseball guys. Some of the young guys are playing for the first time, um, but he's gotten it done. He made some great pitches last night to get get the Cubs win. Um, in the last couple outings, he did it in Detroit, and it's been the slider, not the fastball, that has that has really helped him. So he's got a couple different ways of getting it done. Let's take a trip back to 2001, Coom, when you played for the oh Chicago my. Cubs. An incredible summer in everyone's <laughs> life. Yeah. In sync, the hottest band in the world. Uh-huh. Uh, the ice cream truck. A okay. young yeah. seven year old Chuck Walter was eating a lot of Chaco uh-huh. tacos and, and watching a lot of Ron Coomer and the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> uh, Sosa hit 64 home runs that summer. Just a really exciting time to, to be on a, a Chicago Cubs team. When you think back to that summer, what's kind of the first thing that comes to mind, the first memory that you would remember about that summer? No. Chuck, you <laughs> It's been a while, but it, the memories for me, first and foremost, they're just putting on a Cubs uniform. I grew up going to Wrigley Field as a little kid in Chicago, and, you know, your dream in the backyard playing wiffle ball has always been, you know, playing for the Chicago Cubs. It's just that simple. I just, you know, playing in Wrigley Field, I got to do that as a Minnesota twin coming to play interleague play against the Cubs. But then to put that uniform on and be a cub, I, that stands out more so than anything else. Is just having that opportunity and the Cubs giving me that opportunity um, first, and and then great teammates. We we had a really good team that year: Kerry Wood and Kevin Tappany, and you know obviously Sammy with what he was doing. But you know Matt Stairs and I and and some of the guys. We we just had a a great group of guys on that team, a very veteran team, but a great group of guys and. We had a lot of fun that year um, playing and winning baseball games. And, you know, I I just – there were times where you just, you know, you'd revert back to being a little kid and just like, you know, we're we're playing and it's August and I'm going out to third base at Wrigley Field, the Cubs uniform, right? I mean, you know, those are things that you dream about as a kid when you grow up in a city where your favorite team and then, you know, you're emulating those guys when you're a kid and now – you're one of those guys. So it was really fun. Yeah. I know the feeling, man, being on the microphone, watching Harry grow up and, uh, right. I, Chuck's a lot younger than me. Cause I, 2001 mm-hmm. doesn't seem that long ago. You know, yeah. no, it does to me. I got gray hairs <laughs> to prove it, Nick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've been a Cubs fan since the eighties. Loved mm-hmm. Harry. Um, let me ask you about, uh, Sammy. Chuck, that's Chuck's favorite cub. And, you know, we've kind of talked about it on here. I'm going to give you my take, and I, and I want to hear yours. Um, you know, obviously, he didn't leave the organization with people real happy with him. Right. He's a great player. We, I love him as a player. He's been punished. You know, I, I just feel like it might be time to kind of forgive and forget. I mean, isn't that what America's all about? But you played with him. Uh, I just like to see him at a Cubs convention or sing the seventh inning stretch or we just have so many good memories of Sammy Sosa. Chuck brings it up all the time, and he's right. I mean, like when he's running out with the flags after 9-11, you know, just different things yeah. about Sammy. But you played with him. I'd love to hear your perspective. Well, I, um, I think it's complicated for Sammy and for Tom Ricketts, right? I think that's those are the two people that you have to sit down. And if Sammy wants to be back with the Cubs and the Cubs organization – he needs to talk to Tom. At the end of the day, that's the guy that's going to make this decision. Uh, when it comes to being a Cub player, I mean, just a just a big league hitter, there just weren't many guys that better than Sammy Sosa, period, in the history of our game. And for him to do that in a Cubs uniform was incredible. Uh, you know, he, the whole league was on every movement of him and Mark McGuire uh, during the 98 season. And, you know, I think one day it'll probably happen, but I, you know, I think it, it's probably on Sammy to, you know, do some things that Tom has asked him to do. And until that happens, I, you know, I just don't know if, if this will get resolved, but I hope it does. You don't like to see anybody, you know, cause Sammy at the end of the day is a good person. 
he, you know, he had his ups and downs as a teammate and with some of the teammates, but he also had a lot of things put on him kind of being the face of the league or one of them at the time that the rest of us didn't have to deal with. So uh, I hope it gets worked out. I, I would agree with you, Chuck. I do. I, you know, but I just don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon or not. Uh, I think there's got to be one guy that, you know, really kind of bridges that gap um, to get to Tom and um, we'll see what happens. Tom's a very nice man and a very you know, easy guy to talk to for being an owner of a major league team. So if there's a guy that you could get to and, and talk to, it would be Tom Ricketts. Hey, I agree. I've known Tom a long time too, and I love him. I think he's a great guy. Easy to talk to. If, if that's the bridge, all Sammy's got to do is just walk across because, yep. you know, you know, Tom, very fair guy. Very fair. Yep. I would absolutely agree. One more on Wrigley Field. Ron, um, day game or night game? I think we know the answer, but we have to ask all our guests because Mick and I are in the same boat here. <laughs> no, I, I'm definitely day games at Wrigley Field. There's no doubt. I, I love the day games. Um, I don't mind the night games now that I'm broadcasting. I didn't mind them as a player um, with the schedule because it just gives you, you know, I, I think having as many night games as we have makes the schedule difficult. For the players, I really do. You know, the, the changing of sleep patterns, and we can get into a lot of that. But, you know, that makes it tough. But there's nothing like Friday or Saturday afternoon at Wrigley Field. Uh, the one great thing Pat always brings up on the air every Friday when we're at home is we're the only game being played right now in Major League Baseball on Friday afternoons. And I just – I love the whole idea of going to the park early getting a cup of coffee. I loved it as a player. I love it as a broadcaster. I love sitting in our booth at Wrigley Field in the morning with a cup of coffee and, you know, they're working on the field. The place is quiet. It's just there's something about Wrigley that, I, I don't know, it's just it's, 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 it's got its own peacefulness to it early in the morning before a day game, before everybody piles in. And then you have the absolute extreme – opposite you know a couple hours later of forty thousand people going crazy um you know when when something big happens for the cubs so we get you know day games by far i'm, I'm a day game guy it's it's like it's like neverland man it, it makes you feel young again yeah. wrigley whenever really, you step yeah. in there it always makes you feel like a kid again I, I i have one more mick that i have to ask after a day game you're getting uh you're grabbing a drink somewhere you're getting dinner somewhere what neighborhood slash specific restaurant is uh is serving ron coomer on a on a uh -oh. specific or uh, typical yeah. basis i guess you could say you that, that's, yeah that's an easy one i i'm a, <laughs> i'm a murphy's fan i I've uh, been known with some of my friends to go across the street in center field and, and uh, hang out at Murphy's. I, I think a lot of us do a lot of the ex Cubs and a lot of, you know, some of our friends that, you know, make their way to Wrigley field. And when they're not doing uh, playing hockey games or doing concerts, make our way over to Murphy's. Um, unfortunately, Beth Murphy has passed this past year. Very sad thing. Um, but uh, that's a place if, if you don't have fun there, like Wrigley Field, the fun just continues over across the street, talking baseball. And uh, yeah, Murphy's is one of those places. If you don't have fun there, you, you, there's something wrong with you. And don't forget uh, Coombs Corner too, right? Great place. Yeah, Coombs but Coombs. that's a little ways away. We're we're an hour away. So I know you got to talk uh, yeah. about that before you get off here. Uh, a couple more questions. I, I'm going to ask one more. Chuck, you ask one more. Um, your partner got into the Hall of Fame finally. He deserved it for years. I felt like it probably could have came a few years ago, but hey, look, it doesn't matter. Pat Hughes is a Hall of Famer. He's one of the greatest of all times, and you work with him every day. You got to go to Cooperstown and check it out. What's that entire experience been like? The Cooperstown experience, it was the first time I'd ever been there. So um, everything I thought it would be. And, you know, we went there to, to, at the end of the day simply to support Pat. That was that was it. You know, it's such a happy, um, happy moment for him and his family. And he's, as you know, Mick, he's such a great guy, and he's been great to me as his partner, and, and influential in me getting. You know, maybe the most influential guy of me getting this job and coming back home to broadcast now. So um, we're just really happy for him, and he had a great weekend. We really did. Mitch Rosen got to go. 
uh, and see it, you know, our boss with the score and Zach Zabin. So the three of us went with Tom and Laura and Craig Kenny and um, Colin Faulkner. So we all went from the Cubs and there were some other Bruce Levine was there, but we just had a great weekend. And it was, a, you know, it was one of those things to listen to Pat um, speak and, and talk about the different things in his life that, that mattered to get him there. Just a really fun weekend. So uh, I was really, really glad I was able to go and, you know, thanks to Mitch and Crane, Kenny, for allowing us to miss a couple Cardinal games to be able to go go to Cooperstown. We'll end it with this. I want to ask you about the, uh, the the team from the south side with the reports coming out that they may be potentially looking to move. Um, you, you saw them ship Lucas Giolito and at least get some help in the minor league system, but their farm system as of right now is considered one of the worst in baseball. They have a bona fide star in Luis Robert, but he's not signed super long-term. Dylan Cease not signed super long-term, really good pitcher. Eloy Jimenez the same way. Like, are, are they are they rebuilding right now? Because you would have thought if they were rebuilding, they would have shipped everyone away at the All Star break, and not just Jake Berger, Lu, Lu, Lucas Giolito, and a few others. W- where do the White Sox go from here? Yeah, I really don't know. I, I to be honest with you, they do have some players that can play. There's no doubt. And you know, the, it was a shock. I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I've known Jerry Reinsdorf a long time. Um, and you know, you know, his reputation in the league of being a, a very loyal guy. And he was extremely loyal to Kenny and Rick Hahn, Kenny Williams and Rick Hahn. So, um, I know that was a very difficult decision, uh, but I think the White Sox, you know, they're going to make some changes. They already have, but they're going to make some changes in philosophies, I would think, and, and see where they go. But they do have a core group of guys that can play this game. There's no doubt with Cease as a starting pitcher. And, and you mentioned some of the guys that defensively that are play offense that can really play. And, you know, Robert is a star player in our league. And if you can keep uh, Jimenez on the field, um, he's big time bat. So I don't know where they go from here um, with the Cubs right now. We, we've got all we can handle getting through this season and doing that. But I, you know, it's good for baseball and it's great for our city when the Cubs and Sox are both good teams. Um, so I hope they get back soon and get back being relevant. Um, it, it's it's great for the city and great for baseball when it is that way. Ron right. Coomer, thanks for joining the show today, man. Chuck, Mick, absolutely great to thanks, Mick, for inviting me and uh, great to see you. And, and you know, we usually get a lot of time to spend together in spring training. So hopefully next spring we'll get a lot of time together, buddy. Let's do it, man. Go Cubs.